I saw this recently in the news and I thought it was very appropriate. And here's RuPaul in his or her orange glasses. RuPaul building fortified compound to withstand cycle of destruction. <laughs> cycle of destruction. Hmm. That sounds like history resets. And it sounds like it's a cycle. Like it's something that happens over and over and over again. And maybe people have known about this all the time that this is a part of history. The fact that they can press a big reset button and people go underground and hide out for who knows how long and they pop back out and try to start up the cycle all over again by John, by a Jewish John, J-O, no H-N, Christian. Interesting. Uh, March 2nd at 3.03 p.m. for a nice 33. I am plotting a safety net, says RuPaul, a bunker buster. Acclaimed drag performer RuPaul Andre Charles of RuPaul's Drag Race fame. Uh, it's kind of weird to say that that's what RuPaul was famous for because RuPaul was big back in, was it in the 90s when RuPaul first became a thing? Kind of a pioneer of uh, in your face, oh, the bimbo look is actually a man in drag. And like, what's the difference between RuPaul and, gosh, the married with children lady? Basically the same idea. RuPaul, clearly somebody in the know. Most drag queens know that the female celebrities are obvious drag performances. That's a reason why gay men idolize the most busted, obvious, like Princess Diana types. That's a man, baby, types. <laughs> There's a reason that they gravitate towards the manliest that somehow pass on the world stage. So anyways... RuPaul kind of a pioneer of the clown freak show that we see all over the world today, just being out in the open. But you, you see the way that these people talk, the way that, that ahead of the curve they say stuff like, call me a he, call me a she, it doesn't matter. They're, they're in the know. They know certain things that a lot of people don't know. The resulting profile is not is a can't-miss meditation. Oh, I guess they're talking about he... Uh, RuPaul's memoir. Interesting, the name of the memoir, The House of Hidden Meanings. Uh, the resulting profile is a can't-miss meditation on fame, gender, entertainment, and more. But probably the single wildest part comes toward the beginning, when RuPaul alludes to what the magazine describes as a four-to-five compound he's building with his husband in Wyoming. Isn't Jeffree Star in Wyoming now on some compound? I wouldn't be surprised if Jeffree Star has some basement, like, safe safe rooms or something that I've been seeing pop up. Uh, I just recently saw a, a video on Reddit of, like, an elementary school with safe room. It had, like, these metal windows that came down, and I got crazy apocalyptic vibes. I'm like, people are going to be hanging out in these safe rooms w during the destruction. That's what it felt like. Humans on this planet are in a cycle of destruction, RuPaul said, enigmatically. I am plotting a safety net. I wouldn't call it a bunker, he continued, and then referenced document, documentaries, uh, documentaries, oh my gosh, about castles he's been watching before bed. Yeah, I think castles are a big hideout. Uh, probably the whole concept of, of entering an old castle and it's abandoned with cobwebs, but there's like one weird old dude living there. It's probably referencing the people who survived the resets inside of a castle and they're stumbled upon later at some point. The wealthy, uh, oh wait, what did he say? It's a lot of concrete and a lot of things. I keep thinking about these castles that I'm gonna go into bed to. Speaking in a weird way, talking about concrete is kind of interesting. Compound eyes, the wealthy, RuPaul's net worth is estimated to run well into the tens of millions. Has it ever struck you that a lot of times I think that their salaries and things are inflated. You would assume that somebody like RuPaul would have way more money than that. It's just interesting that really, really, they don't make it that as big as you would think. And these people live really busy lives and have to do really degrading things. So I'm just saying that, you know, regular, a regular everyday person could make that much money if they had a really lucrative business in, in one lifetime. So it's just interesting that Usually famous people live a lot more simple lives than people would think and a lot of what they have are like perks and strings attached things like they may not even own their house they they could be on contract and if they don't do what they're told their house gets taken from them 
and are out on the streets or whatever. <laughs> it almost reminds me of how uh, Andy Dick is just like a known... He, he's basically just like a famous vagrant drug addict that runs around Los Angeles area. Um, I guess Mark Zuckerberg allegedly has a million, $100 million Hawaii safe place. Where is the largest doomsday bunker? Um, massively complex, completely off-grid former military complex. This gives me, uh, what's the, what's the video game? Fallout. Fallout vibes. It's near the Black Hills area of South Dakota. I'm pretty sure, is it Fallout 1? The very first Fallout game where there's a crazy hidden military complex in the Black Hills area. Uh, oh no, the Fallout 1 I think is a one in California. I forget, but it's based off of real life. So yeah, I'm sure the military has plenty of these bases. Don't take other people too serious, uh, he advised. If you have to, build a compound somewhere, but stay ahead of their own self-destructive, ridiculous mentality. Self-destructive, yeah, we have movies like... Uh, oh, man. Dr. Strangelove, that's the movie. Dr. Strangelove, of course they like to talk about atom bombs and all that. I don't believe in nuclear missiles or any of that stuff. It all looks like Hollywood, and... I believe they do have really big bombs, but I think that, you know, what they tell us are volcanoes, I think are often leftover mining heaps, or, I don't know exactly, but I think it more has to do with mining than a natural human, or a natural environmental phenomenon, but I think that they basically, like a volcano, just keep spewing a bunch of ash into the air. This is only my best guess. This is my best guess. I don't think that you need to go around bombing all the populated areas. I think they literally just, like, press a button and they, they have it set up to where for years, who knows, for long periods of times, just ash is shot up into the air. They showed us with uh, the PSYOP, Mount St. Helens It was not a volcano. They literally blew a mountain up. They literally blew a mountain up with Mount St. Helens. And so if they can do that, I'm pretty sure that they can make ash fly out of different places on Earth for a couple years. And that's probably all it takes to, to reset this place, is to, for at least a few years, make sure that nobody can really grow food very well. And when they just go underground, it's like they ghost everybody, I imagine, up here. And so when Big Brother just ghosts everybody, and it's really hard to grow food, and all the distribution systems shut down, and, you know, bottle caps become your currency. I, I don't think it takes very long for the population to get reset. Maybe they give it a decade. Maybe they give it two decades. Who knows? The people in the pictures do look bewildered, like they haven't seen the sun in a while. But what's the best state to have a bunker in and settle down? It's a big topic. Doomsday cities. I know here in Oregon, there's a lot of rich people with doomsday compounds. <clears throat> I, I don't think we should be concerned with that stuff, personally. You know, bring it on is my mentality. I, I feel supernaturally protected, and what's what will happen will happen. I do believe in rapture, and so I pray that myself and my family will be raptured before the worst of the worst. But I've, and I know that this is a sentiment that a lot of people feel, I've, I've always felt that this place is really boring, and that something like a good apocalypse would really shake it up and bring life to an NPC type society where, you know, everybody has a fluoride stare. If they had a real crisis on their hands, it might be more interesting. You might see some more heart in people. <clears throat> or, you know, life. Less fluoride stare, apathy. Okay, so that's it for talking in this video outside of the word. And now I'm just going to finish Jeremiah chapter 4. I started this chapter 2 videos ago. And so I'm going to finish up here at verse 19. My bowels, my bowels. And just notice here that a lot of stuff gets corrupted. The next sentence will show us that bowels just means your insides. It doesn't necessarily have to do with, you know, going number two. My bowels, my bowels, I am pained at my very heart. My heart maketh a noise in me. I cannot hold my peace because thou hast heard, O oh, my soul, the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war. Destruction upon destruction is cried, for the whole land is spoiled. Suddenly are my tents spoiled and my curtains in a moment. How long shall I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? 
so these are like war like a war standard like a banner uh i'm, I'm loving how appropriate this these verses are though for what i'm talking about today for my people is foolish they have not known me they are sottish children cool word and they have none understanding they are wise to do evil but to do good they have no knowledge I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens were fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord, and by his fierce anger. For thus... For thus hath the Lord said, The whole land shall be desolate, yet will I not make a full end. For this shall the earth mourn, and the heavens above be black. Because I have spoken it, I have purposed it, I will not repent, and, and will not repent, neither will I turn back from it. The whole city shall flee for the noise of the horsemen and bowmen. They shall go into thickets and climb up upon the rocks. Every city shall be forsaken, and not a man dwell therein. Man, this is turning out to be one of the coolest chapters for this topic amazing how god works like that <clears throat> and when thou art spoiled what wilt thou do though thou clo clothest thyself with crimson though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold though thou rentest thy face with painting in vain shalt thou make thyself fair thy lovers will despise thee they will seek thy life for i have heard a voice as of a woman in, in travail and the anguish as of her that bringeth forth her first child, the voice of the daughter of Zion, that bewaileth herself, that spreadeth her hand, saying, Woe is me now, for my soul is wearied because of murderers. Wow, this giving me very much reset type vibes. All of the cities being forsaken, empty cities all over. Man, that sounds a lot like history resets. That's it for this video. God bless everyone.